Hi, I'm Karis Williams. I'm an artist designer and fabricator and member of the ESAB elite team of welding influencers. After your welding machine, a good welding helmet is the most essential bit of kit for every operator. Welding helmets protect the wearer against harmful UV and infrared rays, sparks and flying particles. Finding a helmet that's fit for your purpose requires you to consider lens technology, i.e. fixed shade or automatic, optical quality and perception, shade, viewing area, comfort and fit, ADF control functions and PAPR compatibility. But what is the right welding helmet? It's the one that's the best fit for your purpose, of course. Now, as to what your purpose and priorities are, that gets a little more complicated. Helmets use three different types of lens technology, fixed, flip up and automatic. A fixed shade welding helmet features a piece of mineral glass with a fixed shade number. A flip up helmet combines two different lenses, one fixed and one that flips up to offer a shade combination of welding and grinding possibilities. Automatic helmets feature a battery or solar powered auto darkening filter, ADF, which is actually a type of LCD that changes shade when it senses light from the welding arc. ADF technology stops the operator having to make a quick head bob to lower the helmet into position before striking an arc. With ADF technology, it stays on the head in the down position ready to weld. This reduces neck strain and production welders can work faster. While automatic helmets can cost more, novice welders find that they are well worth the money because they can position the electrode or torch before striking an arc. Current ADF helmets switch from a light to dark state in milliseconds or about 10,000 times faster than you can blink. <laughs> Additionally, ADF lenses have a permanent passive filter to protect against harmful UV and infrared light. ADF technology is rated on a scale of one to three with class one being the best, class two is in the middle of the range and three being the average. Standard states that the highest optical classification is 1111. The top end, class 1, offers a clear, sharp, consistent colour view of the weld puddle with good clarity. Recognising true colour helps operators better read the weld puddle and heat affected zone, which are critical factors for puddle control and bead placement. To further help operators, some helmets, for example the Sentinel A50, offer front lens covers in amber and clear. An amber tint can provide contrast between the weld puddle and the rest of the joint, as well as enhance the light in low light conditions. A good tip from me would be to look for lens covers that are easily replaceable when they become scratched and buy a spare pack of covers. Spending money for good optical quality doesn't make sense if you're looking through a horribly scratched lens cover. The shade of welding helmet is indicated by a DIN rating that classifies light filtering levels. A clear lens has a DIN rating zero, and as the numbers go up, the lens gets darker and blocks more light. DIN, D-I-N. Fixed shade helmets such as ESAB's F20 typically come in DIN 10, which is a happy medium for most welding processes. For TIG and MIG applications where you need to read the weld puddle, a lighter lens would be recommended. But for high amperage applications such as welding with large diameter core wires, pulsed MIG and carbon arc gouging, a darker lens is recommended. While a specific shade suggestion can't be made without knowing the application, the following are general guidelines. DIN 0 to 2, good for fit up and working without visual strain. DIN 3 to 4, the operator can still see the part these are popular shades for grind mode. DIN 4 to 5, good for plasma and oxyfuel cutting. DIN 9, typical for low to medium amperage, TIG, MIG or MMA. DIN 10 and 11 are standard shades for industrial welding and gouging. And lastly, 12 and 13, which is used for high amperage applications. ESAB's G30 helmet has an interchangeable lenses on an internal visor and outer flip visor that allows users to combine and create different shade levels. The inner lens of a G30 helmet has shade options of clear 2 and 5, while the outer lens has shade options of 5, 8 and 10.
The G50 and G40 contain large clear visors. The G40 features a shade 10 mineral glass in the flip visor and two viewing area options, one for welding and one for grinding. Considered an entry level auto darkening helmet, the G50 features solar paneled auto darkening filter in the flip visor in a range of nine to 15. It contains two sensors for detecting light from the arc as well as sensitivity and delay controls. The G50's sensitivity control regulates how much light it takes the ADF to darken. This function particularly helps when welding outdoors where sunlight can cause the ADF to darken before the operator strikes an arc. The delay function allows the operator to adjust how long it takes the lens to react after operator's breaks arc. In high amperage applications, it keeps the lens dark a fraction of a second longer to give the weld puddle a chance to lose its cherry red intensity and cool. The Savage A40 auto darkening helmet represents a step up from the G50 helmet. At 500 grams, the Savage A40 is the lightest helmet in ESAB's lineup. It has four sensors, for better arc detection and, in addition to delay and sensitivity controls, has an external grind button for better productivity. Welders can activate a Shade 4 grind mode on the left side of the A40 while wearing a heavy welding glove. This means that you can grind without needing to remove your helmet. At the top end are auto darkening helmets such as ESAB Sentinel A50 with an auto darkening filter that switches from a light to dark state at speeds of 1 25,000th of a second and even faster. I wear one of these and it's so light and fits perfectly. The Sentinel has four sensors for optimal arc detecting, particularly when welding out of position and has a shade range of 5 to 13. The lower ranges of a top tier helmet help when TIG welding at low amperage and when using small diameter electrodes at lower amperages and when plasma or oxyfuel cutting. The helmet's headgear has additional straps to better distribute perceived weight. The five points of contact have added cushion for comfort as well as greater adjustability with more than 500,000 possible combinations in total. In addition to all the controls, the Sentinel A50 has a memory function that eliminates fiddling around with settings before welding. Lastly, the helmets mentioned today are prepared for powered air purifying respirators or PAPRs. And this will be featured in the next episode of ESAB Arc Chat. Don't miss it. If you still need help selecting the right welding helmet, we have created a great ESAB helmet selection guide poster, which you can request at esab.com forward slash arc chat.